we as human beings do that actually throughout our lives. You know, when we get angry, when we get sad, when we have these big overpowering emotions, we will say things that we honestly don't mean, Mm -hmm. but it's in the same way, you know? And so one of the things that we as parents have to do is understand that what our kids are saying, they, they don't mean that. Welcome to the Empowering Choices Parenting Podcast. My name is Joshua. I'm Lucas. And I'm Eric. Eric and Lucas are licensed professional counselors. And the title of today's episode is When Your Kids Say, I Hate You, with that much, probably more. Well, I was going to say, if it's actually coming out of your child's mouth and they so mean it, it's going to be... Radio announcer-like. Right, yeah. It would, it would probably strain the microphone. I hate you. That's, yeah. That's, yeah mm-hmm. that's, that's more like Sick it. Sick of this. Eric, you were inspired by this one. What uh, what was driving that that inspiring thought you had? Well, you know, I find a lot of parents are very afraid of those words, I hate you. Okay. Or if they discipline their children, that they will hate them. And it's just they're afraid of being hated. And um, so I thought maybe we should talk a little bit about that because, you know, these are you know, human beings who are going to say maybe not just I hate you, but they're going to say harsh things. And so the question is, I mean, how much do they really mean it? Mm -hmm. So you were talking about the idea of a parent being afraid of, Mm -hmm. of, of that. And they're afraid that, what are they afraid their kid's going to do? Hate them. Just hate them. Afraid their kid's going to hate them. And what does that come out of? Like, did they hate their parents? Well, I mean... Let me ask this: Did you um, did you ever say harsh things to your parent? Sure that I did. Probably, I don't think an enormous amount, but yeah. And did you did you mean it forever? Yeah, not forever. No. Did you mean it for the moment? Probably. Yeah, it was a, it was an it's emotional a, yeah an it's emotional an overflow outburst. of what you're feeling. Okay, that's an overflow. Yeah. So, I mean, in the parenting manual, we talk about how kids, uh, human beings, when they're born, their thinking is out of the emotional center of the brain. Right. They want fun. They they want to continue with fun. They want to have fun. They want to have what they want. They want to enjoy things. And sometimes when we as parents, being good parents, have to say, no, you have to go to bed. Mm Mm-hmm. Or as one of my um, moms had her son wake up in the middle of the night and say, I want gummy worms. <laughs> and when she said, no, you need to go to bed. In the, he middle, res- of the, in the middle of the night. He responded with, I hate you. <laughs> I don't know. Like, obviously, it was a different circumstance at the moment. From, but from a distance, that sounds hilarious. It, it does sound hilarious. But it, only from a distance. It was hilarious to her from a distance, but not in that moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she's also asking me, does he really hate me? Mm-hmm. You know, okay. At three so, in the morning. For, yeah. Well, no, she wasn't asking me at three in the no. morning. But, but I'm you know, saying this was happening right, in the middle of the night. It's just happening yeah. in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, and and the, so I want to bring us back to your kids have a blood DNA bond to you. You also have a blood DNA bond to them, which means that there are certain words they can use that are going to rip holes in you. And, and it's just the way it works in, in a human relationship. You, they're that close. That's half your DNA that made up that little human being. But what parents forget is that that half also bonds them to you. Um, I know there are philosophies out there that any human being um, can be raised by any human being, and it's just fine. The problem with that is that kids in the adoption system, even Mm -hmm. if they had no contact with their parents, go looking for their parents to find out who their parents were as adults. Not not even the idea of, I was picturing the idea of like, you know, they, they say it's about like ducks, right? They bond to the first thing they see. Um, but you're talking about like even if they don't see the, you know, their biological parent, they will like go and search out for them. So like that to like even more so. Exactly. We are not like ducks. We do not bond to the first thing we see. Well, I was just thinking now, about the idea that like you know any person could raise any right. other person, but like yeah, I think even, it's a great analogy. Even, even with animals, like you know, once that bond was attached, 
you it wouldn't want to be broken mm -hmm. but you're talking about like even outside of the idea of sight and the first thing you see it's even bigger than that oh yeah so it's that plus right Ex exactly because you can you can take a baby in that's not yours and you can raise it and it can be bonded to you it will mm -hmm. be bonded to you um but at some point when they find out that you're not its mommy or daddy now they're going to start thinking, where are my parents? Who are mm -hmm. my parents? And be drawn towards them in some way, even if it's just thought. Mm -hmm. Not every person out there who um, loses their parents in some way goes to find them. Um, but in thought, that, that's still going to be there. So the thing is, is we're going to say harsh things to our parents in emotional moments. And we as human beings do that actually throughout our lives. You know, when we get angry, when we get sad, when we have these big overpowering emotions, we will say things that we honestly don't mean, mm -hmm. but it's in the same way, you know? And so one of the things that we as parents have to do is understand that what our kids are saying, that they, they don't mean that in a general sense. I mean, if you're, I've seen many a lifetime movie to where you have abusive parents and you have the kids that's saying, I hate you, um, or some other harsh thing. And if it's been going on for quite some time that they're not being nurtured, they're not being loved, there's going to be an inner rage that is building. And so that those emotions are going to last longer. And you, and you're talking about a, a, objectively abusive, abusive situation. situations. Yeah. Um, I've had kids and worked with kids who were in and from some of the most abusive situations. And they legitimately, even as adults, would talk about hating their parents. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, there was always this little spark inside them that if my parent were to turn... Yep and want to be a parent and, and want to restore the relationship, they would welcome it with open arms. Um, and so you're talking about the idea of if there is a attempt at a positive relationship, like you're saying like th this mm -hmm. is an abusive relationship and that's not going well, but like if there's an attempt by the parent to be positive, then there will be a, I don't know, say an easier, higher, better chance of a, of a good relationship at that point. Generally speaking, yes. There is always going to be an exception. Right. But yeah. Yeah. You know, generally speaking, yes. And what, did, what does that mean coming back to kids is that when I said to my dad on two different occasions, I hate you. You remember specifically I the remember two times specifically, that it happened. Yeah, because I remember the look on his face and it ripped mm -hmm. a hole right through him. I instantly thought, I shouldn't have said that. Okay. I didn't really mean that. You know, and, you know, looking back, you know, even in the next day or two after that, I was like, yeah, I didn't mean that. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's the thing is that as parents, we have to understand that our kids are not meaning those big statements that they may say. It's more they just wanted something they weren't getting. And, you know, we as parents have to kind of grow a bit of a thicker skin and fall back in on the relationship, the team parenting, you know, because if, if one parent gets it, the other parent may need to step forward. And the one who took that shot needs to step back a little bit um, and kind of bandage themselves up a bit. I wonder if the analogy, I mean, I think growing a thicker skin has, has its place. I almost wonder if the idea is like, I think take a step back almost sounds like a metaphor that resonates more with me mm -hmm. when we're talking about that because it feels like growing a thicker skin is like, all right, now I'm going to like stay in here and I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wonder if taking a step back might be a better approach than just standing there in the face of whatever emotional, because it's probably an emotional fight that's happening. When you're in the heat of the moment, that's not the time when you're growing a thicker skin. No, 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 no. Yeah. But I mean, I almost wonder if like the skill that you would want to have is even if you have the ability to grow a thicker skin, if there's, well, I mean, all of these are tools, right? All these so are tools. if an additional tool would also be when those things happen, I take a step back when I can. And, and so I think just the, just kicking this back and forth, um, there are different, I mean, everybody's different. 
So sure. some people hearing it might be able to grab onto that growing a thicker skin. Other people may be able to grab onto that. Um, let's take a step back mm-hmm. and kind of work with those pieces. It's going to hurt. You know, that the, the point isn't that it isn't going to hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, getting the information that um, your kid really doesn't mean it. You know, mm-hmm. just like a kid, if you say, would you like to have broccoli or chocolate chips cookies? <laughs> that most of them, except my son, will go for the chocolate chip cookies. A whole other podcast about you. Right? Yeah. And, um, and the thing is, they have no idea that the chocolate chip cookies are going to be very, very bad for them in the long in run. In the long run, if it's, If yeah. that's all they're eating. You know, and so <laughs> my friend can attest to that. He has a heart condition now. Right. <laughs> in college. Right. And, and so it's some of that is just the information um, that the adult needs to have that, OK, they don't have the ability to choose well for themselves. Mm. Um, and so that means that goes right down to speech. I mean, at times they're going to be very, very quick on saying certain things And a part of kind of defending ourselves against that is being able to remind ourselves that, okay, they don't really mean it. You know, we are blood bonded. I'm going to give them a little bit of time. We'll come back. We'll talk about it, you know, and the emotions coming back down, you know, is an important piece. Um, I work with a family and there's some siblings and these are strong willed kids who have a strong-willed dad, who have a strong-willed mom, and the girls especially have some high-voltage emotions. And when they really get angry, they really say things. And, you know, I've, I've been in the room where I've coached the dad on, mm. you know, being able to not respond to certain things, you know, because mm-hmm. I know the kids don't mean it, but they're trying to win the fight. You know, and that's a part of of what we have to remember as adults is using strong words. It can also be just a way of getting the ice cream cone, metaphoric (laughs) ice cream cone that we think we should have at that time. And we have no idea, you know, that that's not even good for us. And so parents knowing that their DNA bond is the foundation of the relationship, that can be very freeing for a lot of people. So you've mentioned the blood bond a lot and the DNA bond a lot, but I'm just thinking, what what do you do if you are a parent who adopted your child or you have a different situation and they're yelling those things at mm-hmm. you? I don't know that you're you all not of a my sudden, real dad. You know, I hate well, you. Well, it's okay because you know. Mm-hmm. So how how then do you deal? It's a great question. Yeah. Um, I knew a man once, and um, he had two daughters. And one girl they had naturally, but before they were pregnant, um, they didn't think they were going to be able to have kids. So they were moving in the adoption process with a baby. And then they found out they were pregnant and they got the um, birth of their daughter. At the same time, they got the adoption of their daughter. Oh, goodness. Oh, so they were like the same they age. They were like the same mm-hmm. age. Um, and I asked him one day, I just said, John, I'm just curious can you tell any difference in the bond? I could barely end the sentence. And he just said, not a bit. He goes, I love them both the same. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a difference between them. You know, so in answer to your question, it's, it's a little bit of a harder road because you have to intentionally put more time into and foster that relationship. But uh, the bond that occurs can be just as powerful as the blood bond it depends on how it's nurtured. Well, I think the thing that I would say is that like the metaphor that we use all the time is we're trying to give parents tools. Right. So if you're missing a tool, use the ones you have. Yeah. Right. So if you don't have the DNA bond, you have all of these other ideas of provide structure in the kid's life, provide a relationship in which you spend time with them and all of these other kind of fundamentals that we go for. And, you know, you do, you do, you use the tools you have and you can't, panic about the ones you don't. Right. Yeah. And I guess coming back to, to knowing your child, knowing the situation, there are some cases like that one where from the very beginning you had this child, but maybe now I have a 15 year old that I've only had for two years. Oh, Sean may not obviously be, um, as developed there. And so Mm -hmm. you, you have to work harder to Mm -hmm. try to, to try to do that. Oh, ironic that you say a 15 year old. 
<laughs> as I've had kids that I've connected with at a variety of teenage ages, and you're dead on, <laughs> it's the relationship time. Mm-hmm. You know, the time that I put into connecting with them created bonds that long after that time, you know, they look to me as their parent in a lot of mm-hmm. different ways. Mm-hmm. I'm fairly certain if I'm remembering correctly, I have a friend who was adopted kind of through the foster system and he, he only ran into his current adopted family when he was in like high school and he refers to them as mom and, you know, as his family. Yep. Um, I've never told him what the story was about the people he grew up with before then, but I'm guessing it's not a good story. You know, it's interesting. I, I used to know a, a gentleman um, and he worked uh, at a university um, I think he was in admissions um, somewhere in there in that type of a role. And he would uh, meet all kinds of students. And I remember that he would connect students that he, he seemed to connect with were, you know, kind of some students kind of like your friend who had been in the foster care system. Mm -hmm. And um, as adults, as he connected with them and built that bond with them, Mm -hmm. Um, through his role, he actually adopted about four of them. Oh my goodness! As adults, as as adults, as we're adults. like legally like yeah. not adoption not necessary at right. that point. And they were they very much you know even you know quite a, several of them were in their thirties, had families, and mm. you would have thought that they were just his natural kids. Mm-hmm. Would you say that also some of this comes back to? the type of environment that's created in the home mm-hmm. and the language and the things that the parents use. So for like example, I had friends whose parents would say all kinds of terrible things mm-hmm. to the, they would be just as outrageously mm-hmm. yelling and whatever in my family. I'm going to kick you out of the house. I'll never see you again. Right, I'm going to send you off to stuff. live with auntie and grandma and the state will take you away. Yep, and exactly. if adults are throwing that kind of language around. Yeah. And then like in, in my family, in my house, I remember my parents very clearly having a conversation with me about there are certain words that we don't use mm-hmm. when talking about our parents or our family mm-hmm. because you know, we love each other. And even if we feel like you hate someone, you just don't say that. And so like in my mm-hmm. house, that was not something that we did. I never mm-hmm. used those words because I was so, so, and then I've known people who say, if you say you hate me or use that word, mm-hmm. I, you will be locked away for, you know, so I'll lock like you in the closet for forever. It. Yeah. So a little Harry Potter there, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. yeah. So what's I'm, I'm working yeah. on your question. Okay. What's, yeah. what's your question? Yeah. So I guess, I guess my question is, should we, is that appropriate? One, I guess, is it appropriate to just say, mm-hmm. we're not going to use these types of words because we're family and no matter what you feel is it appropriate to punish for that. And mm-hmm. then how much of that is created by like, obviously sometimes kids are just going to go off the rails no matter what, but would you see it that more often kids yelling, I hate you have parents that are also high strung and, and yelling things or, or is it really no correlation? Well, you like have, you, you have what's called mirror neurons that are here in the frontal part of the brain. And if I yawn and you feel tempted to yawn or yawn, that's the one you say you're going to yeah, yawn right I now. Just, just thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's the purpose of mirror neurons. Um, and so, do we were talking about this in a, a couple podcasts ago about do what I say, not what I do. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. I do is is a greater pattern force for a human being because of mirror neurons. And will you have kids who are reflecting what it is they're hearing and seeing within their home on a general basis? Um, is that true? Yes. Does it mean that all kids are who say those things are Mm. only from environments that say those things. No, No. we started this podcast with, have you said harsh things to your parents, Josh? Mm. Right. And I'm guessing that you might, the harsh Mm. things you might've said were not harsh things that were said to you. Right. My dad never said that he hated me. Mm. And, And so it's the, the likelihood of that coming up from an environment that is very nurturing is rarer, generally speaking, mm-hmm. the stronger the will, the child, the more they're going to look for how do I have control in the situation just to get what I want. Okay. And so they may try those things. 
Uh, we talked about in a different uh, podcast that in order to kind of gain some power in my house, um, when my dad came, my dad's boss came over, I flinched when my dad went to pass me the, the mashed potatoes. There was no reason to flinch. That was all me putting that into play mm. in order to gain power <laughs> in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I picked exactly the right person to, that came over only... I didn't know it at the time because he understood this kind of a thing far better than mm -hmm. anybody else. So he was very supportive to my dad and it didn't mm -hmm. work. And I'm glad it didn't work because um, that would have been devastating to my growth and being raised to gain that much power, you know. Mm -hmm. And so can kids who come from any environment say harsh things to their parents? Absolutely. Will every kid? No. There, there are kids who, who have never said those things, never wanted to say those things, will never say those things. Um, but you're going to have the majority of us as human beings that at some point are going to say something harsh, something a little mean, something a little cutting. And those are the pieces where we have to remember, this is not because I said no to them, meaning they don't hate me. It may have come because I said no to them, but it's for their good. And I'm not going to take that personally. You know, you have to, you know, in treatment centers, when we were working with really, really um, hard kids who had been through the most abusive of environments, sometimes they are cussing you up one side mm -hmm. and down the other, saying all kinds of cutting things. And what you have to remind yourself is who you are. Okay, so if they're sitting there calling you all kinds of bad words, you know who you are, you know you're not those bad words, mm -hmm. and you haven't done anything that would elicit, you know, the definition of those bad words, then you just remind yourself of that, wave that off, look at the kid and go, yeah, okay, I know I'm not that, now what's up? Yeah. What's going on? You know, it's harder when it's your kid, mm -hmm. that is for sure. Um, but that's where you've got to have some of these different tools put in there so that you don't accidentally really hurt the relationship that you've been cultivating when your child is simply doing what a child will do in a high emotional situation. Doesn't mean you don't talk about it. Doesn't mean there aren't consequences. It just means they really don't hate you, that they really don't mean the things that they are saying and you'll be able to work that out as soon as, you know, the emotions come down and you're able to intentionally go back in and talk to them. Perfect. And yeah, I love how we were talking about, you know, there are all these different tools and all these different ways to deal with that. And that really is sort of the premise of the parenting manual and of so many of the courses and the things that um, you can find on our website and in our app. So if you haven't checked out those other resources, make sure to do that by going to empoweringchoices.community or in the app store, you can search for Empowering Choices Parenting and you can find our app and we will see you there and we will see you on the next episode.